Camping in the snow with no tent. This is a refuge cabin, so free accommodation in the mountains. This is the chimney. Just go for a walk around the back. So we've spent the last couple of nights here. There's a nice layer of snow on the ground, probably only about four or five inches. That's the toilet there, the outdoor toilet. So it kind of resembles something from the 1800s. A lot of these refuge huts in Australia are exactly that old. Just go for a quick walk over to the water source so I can show you where we've been collecting water. Here we, here's the uh, creek. So obviously that's just melting snow that's flowing down the mountains. You gotta watch your step around here because a lot of the snow turns to ice overnight. I think it was about minus eight last night. It's a lot warmer inside the, inside the cabin because we do have a heater in there, a, a pot belly stove log fire. Let's just quickly go around the front, take him inside. It's quite a large cabin. Swing around and see the mountains. And here's the front door. So trekking poles. So when I'm hiking in the snow, I definitely bring trekking poles. And there's the snow, uh, snow stopper attachment on the end of the trekking pole. The best thing, the best thing about this cabin is this wood storage area at the front here. Hopefully the camera's picking it up. There's the saw. So the whole front of this cabin is a wood cutting area. So here's the inside of the hut. Double bunk. Spare room out the back. So when you're camping in a hut like this, in the snow, you, you, really, you don't even have to carry a tent and sometimes you can even just bring a very light sleeping bag provided that you have fire. Here's the pot belly stove. Just have a quick look inside. There's the fire. So the only problem with getting the fire going super hot, and this is a health concern actually, and that is when you're in the snow, all your food will be frozen quite often and your meat could be frozen but then during the night if you do have the fire up uh, very hot what will happen is the whole hut could um, the temperature inside the hut could reach you know, 10 or 15 degrees celsius and next thing you know your meat is thawing out that is it's melted and then the next day um, when you put the fire out it will refreeze and if you eat it well you could get food poisoning obviously because it's been double frozen just out here on the windowsill. Got my Sunto watch just taking a temperature reading. I'm not sure if the GoPro can pick it up, but it's minus three degrees outside the hut. Let's close the window, bring the watch back inside. So I use the watch to monitor the temperature inside this hut. Now I think if you're camping in the snow, it's advisable to preferably keep the temperature inside the hut below five degrees. I know it seems very cold, but if you're wearing uh, warm clothes, you'll be able to withstand five degrees. Just give you a quick look at our backpack so you can see how different it is, well, how slightly different it is when we're snow hiking. There's our snowshoes tied on to the back of the backpack. So just have a one piece of rope. There's a carabiner there. It's hooked around the side straps of the backpack. So because the snow is so thin in this area, we won't be wearing snowshoes. We'll have to carry them, unfortunately. There's Christina's backpack and her ladies' snowshoes. Another look around at the hut. And here we have something they have in cabins all over the world. I know in a lot of other countries at least. New Zealand in particular has a lot of these huts. This is the hut logbook. So people who come here, they like to put their names in here, um, tell you what they're doing in the area. 
And you, by reading the entries in this uh, logbook, you really can learn a lot about the mountains around us. So we were reading this yesterday and we actually managed to learn quite a bit about the route up the mountains. So there's a lot of other huts further up the trail and we can actually learn um, what the condition of those huts is uh, by the entries in the book. And right there, the last entry is Bush Channel. Find us on YouTube, adventure videos. So another, another new tip we'd like to share with you, something we came up with recently, is a lot of bushwalkers who hike in extreme cold like to buy uh, down jackets. So I've, I've got a couple of down jackets myself, but it's not really necessary. They're, they're just extremely expensive. And because the down is uh, wrapped in a synthetic layer, you get really sweaty and, and it gets smelly. So that's why we've switched a lot of our clothing to wool. And this jumper Christina's wearing is merino wool. We picked up in a second hand shop. And just recently, we've been lucky enough to pick up about five different woolen jumpers in op shops. The one I'm wearing is also wool. So I've got two layers of wool on here and underneath a third layer. So just because you're buying woolen jumpers doesn't mean you have to buy a really thick woolen jumper like the, the kind of uh, jumper your, your grandma might have knitted back in the 80s. You, you can get wool um, in very fine grades. So that, that orange woolen jumper you saw Christina wearing is only about 200 grams in weight and these two jumpers I'm wearing are very similar. So, and the best thing about wool also is it's quite comfortable to hike in. Uh, a lot of mountain climbers would be completely aware that hiking uphill in a down jacket is really not comfortable. You get so sweaty because the synthetic layer doesn't breathe properly. But believe it or not, wool breathes extremely well and it doesn't uh, breed bacteria like synthetic clothes do. One of the problems with modern humans is you think that you might have the whole situation worked out. Fortunately, nature has had the situation worked out for millions of years. And animals have grown hair on their bodies for millions of years. One thing to be cautious of when you're coming out here um, to sleep in a hut, if you aren't carrying a tent or just in general, is there's three things you need to first worry about. That is, will the hut be occupied? So the hut might already be completely crowded. As you can see, there's no one here because we are very far into the national park. So you won't necessarily have a bed. You might have to sleep on the floor of the hut. So a second thing to be concerned about when hiking in the snow is the hut can actually be completely buried in snow. Believe it or not, in a really heavy dump of snow on, on uh, over a few weeks, even the chimney can be completely buried. So if the snow is deep and you are camping, it's often best to have a shovel in your group, a snow shovel. So there have been a lot of cases, even here in Australia, where people have actually had to dig their way into the hut. And some of the Australian huts have a special entrance, a manhole at the top for getting in when the entire hut is buried. So the third thing you need to worry about when you're hut camping, when you're coming out to one of these huts is just because the hut was there a month ago doesn't mean it's still there. Unfortunately, some of these huts get damaged um, by not only storms, but when people put too much wood on the fire. So if you put too much wood on the fire, the entire hut can actually burn to the ground. It does happen. And when you do leave the hut, when you pack up and leave and go home, always make sure you close the door. I'll just explain why. Just close the door. During a big storm, the wind can blow the door open. And as the storm continues during the night, the door will swing back and forth, back and forth. And the door of the hut can literally be blown off its hinges. And this can all lead to yeah, a lot of problems, even for the next people who have to use it, because some of these huts are used by cross-country skiers <clears throat> in emergency situations. 
you know, during a blizzard. And if they come here and the, the door of the hut's gone, all the windows are blown out because of the extreme wind, it's not going to be a very good night for them. And it could actually be life-threatening. So there's a few basic rules in hut camping. Most of those rules are inside there on a sheet of paper. And these huts normally have uh, a list of rules for you to read when you arrive. So you don't have to pay anything to stay here. It's just complimentary housing for adventure, bushwalkers slash cross-country skiers. And I'd just like to thank the Kosciuszko Huts Association for building these huts across the National Park. Absolute champions. <sighs> Woo! And while I've been making this video outdoors, the temperature in the hut, the Sunto watch has now taken a reading. Hopefully we're picking this up. The temperature is one degrees in the hut. One degrees Celsius, just above freezing. It's a very nice temperature and the wood heater is keeping us above the freezing point. This is Bush Channel on another adventure in the mountains of Australia.